Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Ah! Welcome to another episode of Cut the Tape. Today, we cut the tape on something I've been meaning to open for a long time. These are the Transformers Evergreen series. I've had these for a bunch of years just sitting around, but I finally got Soundwave. And I thought, well, I can't open Soundwave without opening... The, the first guys. Uh, so these are very similar in design. They're not quite blown up versions of, of the smaller ones. But they are very similar. And these are usually found at like your dollar store, uh, your Five Below, uh, maybe a Ross, uh, TJ Maxx, Home Goods, discount stores. They are a way of getting the Transformers characters to an audience that, uh, A, w without being insensitive, have less funds to spend on, on consumer goods, and B, um, to be in places that are impulse buying. So let's say you're at Ross, and you're shopping for clothes, and your little kid says, Mommy, I want a Transformer. There you go. So, these are very simple transformations. Wow, I can't believe I'm actually opening one of these. I've had these sitting for so long, and I finally have a place to put them in my collection room. So I thought, all right, time to open them. And the problem is, I, uh, I've been buying these so long, I forget which ones I have. I have a whole bunch of Starscreams now. So, uh, email me at cutthetape at tftalk.net as to why I should send you one of these Starscreams. Give me a good reason why. Alright. So, these are the classic characters. You got your Megatron, your Starscream, Optimus, Bumblebee, Grimlock, Soundwave, and Ratchet. Soundwave and Ratchet are new additions. For many years, it was just the top uh, A-tiered characters. All right. So one thing I will notice is that so this is my first time ever handling one of these. The joints are actually pretty stiff. That's pretty good. And the the plastic. It doesn't feel like it's poor quality plastic. It it feels it feels pretty solid. Now, transformation wise, this thing should be incredibly simple. Let's see here. Whoa. That'll happen. That'll happen. Let's see without looking at the instructions or really noticing what it's supposed to turn into. Let's take a guess as to how this may transform. Look at that. I did it. Yay. All right. So Megatron, a pretty simple Megatron. Uh, wheels on the bottom really could be better. There's not a whole lot of clearance on them. So the wheels could be better. But I mean, for the price that you're paying for this, for the size, 
This is a great buy. This is a great buy. And you know what? It's it's a generic character. Uh, it's generic alt mode. So you can't say, oh, it's Megatron from this, in se this series. No, it's a generic, generic Megatron. Now, the smaller versions are heavily inspired by the larger versions. There's another way of doing this. And it's not like that because the tape is too strong. These are just very generic vehicle versions of your classic staple characters for the line. All right. So we separate all this stuff because we recycle all this. Make the world a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. All right, so right off the bat, it looks so similar to the Megatron we just opened. Very, very similar. It looks like they share some CAD design parts. So like the blaster looks like it's just uh, modeled um, sized down or sized up, probably sized down. These are probably designed in the bigger scale and then size down. And that's where the adjustments are made to the design. Let's see here, boom, boom, boom. Look at that, easy peasy, easy peasy, right? couple design differences. Uh, these are probably designed in CAD, so it's easy for a designer to change the size, but then based off of tooling needs, they can say, all right, we got to change this. We can add a little more detail here, add a little more detail here. Sometimes, very rarely, you will get a character that's fully sized up or sized down and remains the same. Usually for the bigger price point, you want to add a few more bits of articulation. So example, this one, even though the waist are the same, the chest are pretty much the same. There is uh, a waist joint here. The head has an extra way of hiding. They're the, sa they're the same head. You got a few extra bits of articulation because again, the price point would demand it or would allow it. There you go. I mean, it's a little wonky with those arms, but that, that may just be Megatron. And again, these are supposed to be generic representations of your core characters. Let's say, hey, I can never get the Megatron from XYZ series, from the Generation series. Well, you know what? This Megatron will do nicely. The ones at places like Walgreens, I've actually used that Shockwave for my Generation shelf. Now, um, Ratchet's another new one. I do want to open Ratchet. I do want to open Ratchet. I got a thing for Ratchet and Thundercracker. And uh, pretty impressive that they've gone all this time without doing a repaint in the secret colors. But again, uh, it's, it's a core character. So I don't know if I would consider Thundercracker and Skywarp core characters. Chances are a kid would know Starscream a lot better than they would Thundercracker or Skywarp. Now, this came out uh, recently, let's say in the last couple of months, but I can already tell you the design on this, even though it's at the same scale as this Megatron, is a lot more complicated. It's a lot more intense. Just from opening it right out of the box, I feel that there was maybe a design change or a designer change along the way, and... We get, I feel, a better product. And even though these have been released 
over a couple years. As in, this figure keeps getting released over and over and over again. There's no packaging variations that I can tell. Now, I will say there is a difference in the plastic consistency. This is a much softer plastic. This, I hate to, say, I hate to use this terminology, feels like a discount dollar store plastic. As opposed to this feels like the normal Transformers plastic, but this one's a couple years old. I would want to know, and it's something for me to look into now, if the versions of this that are available at retail are just leftover stock, or if they're a second or third printing with different plastic. And the way I'm gonna check that is by looking at the UPC codes on the back and checking the manufacturing number on the back. So you see this little number right here? It's hard to see, it's a stamp. It's imprinted as they leave the assembly line. That's a way for guys who care about variants like me to be able to track that stuff. It takes a lot of time to track a variation of this nature. Sometimes you can just go into the store and say, oh, wow, they changed the gun. Or they changed his, his head, and now it's uh, gray instead of black. Subtler variations like this, production variations of this nature, a little tougher to come by. You really got to care and be into that. So I guess caring and being into it is the same thing. Not a whole lot of deco on these guys. So looking at this, paint apps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten hits total. Let's take a look how many paint apps this guy's got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I would say this is 11, 12. So some of these like this right here, that's probably, um, one mask that goes over the part. It gets sprayed, mask comes off. So that's probably like one, this counts as one, if in fact they did it. So like these little red dots right here, these little red dots right here on his pelvis, on his waist, that would be one uh, spray application. So the mask would fall over the part, it would get sprayed, mask would come off, and you'd have the two little dots there. Uh, the symbols are always one hit. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's open Soundwave, because I've been trying to find Soundwave, and I finally found them. And so, here he is. So, uh, one thing I just want to point out, the reason I take my time in cutting these off, I don't keep these, right? I have a second set sealed. The reason I take my time, it's just better for recycling. Do Mother Earth a favor and recycle. So, another thing I'm noticing is... There, again, no bio, but uh, there was no uh, twist ties or bands holding this down into the plastic. All right, this one. This one feels a little more. Um, what's the word? I want to say cheap. Cheap's a bad word. Cheap's a bad word. I would say this one feels uh, like it's living up to the standards of where it's being sold. Oh, look. There's feet. Yes. You know, uh, the, the kind of wonkiness of the articulation here, I hate to say it, but it's it's almost reminding me of Built to Rule. 
Built to Rule was Creo 10 years before Creo. Um, so that's sound. There is a big difference in the plastic consistency of these two. This is a bigger, chunkier figure. This is a slimmer one. The Megatron weighs more. I think with some repro, repro labels, if anybody cared to repro label these guys, they look a little better, but there's only so much that can be done with these. Interesting. Those were the two. Ratchet and Soundwave were the two I wanted to open the most. Hmm. And uh, you know what? Let's end. Let's end with Grimlock. Just because he's not a vehicle. He's got a beast mode. Oh. I do keep the instructions, though. In case I never sell these. I got a big file of instructions I just gotta put away. Alright. Wow, this... This feels as cool as a Happy Meal toy. Um, interesting. Oh, look at that. That's how the fist gets. So the fists are on the outside. That's interesting. All right, so let's see here. Let's just transform him. Wow, that is... I mean, the... the Ball joints are tight. The ball joints are definitely tight. But it's got a it's got a wonkiness to it. So, there I knew there was something. There was some weird way. Oh maybe that's it. That's what it is. Oh, here comes one of the kids. And I, while I don't have, I know I have the larger Grimlock around here somewhere. I think he's got a little extra tail articulation. You know, the only thing that like really bothers me about this, besides these hands, are this. I understand why it's done. I understand why they're they're a molded feature and not an extra part that just plugs in. But it just looks like there's something missing from from the T-Rex mode. Can't find snow pants. Oh, Casey, you can't find snow pants. All right, find the best pants you can. So it's Friday, the day before Halloween. It's mischievous night, and Casey can't find snow pants, and it's snowing in western Massachusetts. You know, one thing about being homeschooled, uh, or being fully remote from school, rather, is that really no such thing as a snow day. I mean, because you're home. I think a lot more detail was put into the robot mode. And I think we can all kind of agree on that. Maybe not so much Ratchet. And I think that's because of the vehicle mode. If they had made Ratchet like a... Not like a Jeep Wrangler, but... Something to that effect, like a trailblazer or something. I think the robotiness, the alt mode, the robot mode would have been a little better. Grimlock. Uh, of course, these guys all have five millimeter pegs. So that means. Boom! It appears Ratchet has. Not quite three millimeter pegs. Somewhere in between. Boom. So all these guys will work with the weaponry of this guy. Of your Centurion drone. Except for Ratchet. I wonder why that is. I'm disappointed in that. Hmm. Okay. Let's uh, let's open Starscream just because his alt mode is not ground based. We'll end with Starscream. All right, he's a plane. You guys know that. 
you know, I just got the uh, Alternity Thundercracker and Skywarp. And what's, they're both uh, cars. And what's interesting about them is um, in robot mode, they have little features that pop out to make it look like they have wings on the back. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. All right, so Starscream. Plastic feels a lot, this is an older one. Plastic feels a lot better than this one, but this one's got more oomph to it. And that's simply because Starscream has a sleeker alt mode. Okay. Oh, there we go. The head pops down. You know what's interesting about the Starscream is he seems to have a bit of an IDW design. I would say they kind of all have an IDW design. Well, I think this is supposed to click. It doesn't want to click. All right. You know what? This is very similar to the G1 Pretender Starscream vehicle. I bet you someone can do a really cool repaint of this. I'll tell you what. If you do a really cool Photoshop of this and you send it to me at TF... I cut the tape at tftalk.net. Uh, I might send you one. And then you could paint it in real life and send it back. Now, how do I get the head to pop back out? That is the key. Because that, there we go. Need a little, little muscle there. Hmm. Uh, I think it's popped out all the way, but it looks like he's tucking his chin in. Let's see. Don't do this at home, kids. Don't use knives unless you're trained to use a knife. My kids do knife fighting. They're trained to use knives. I train them, we're very safe when we do it. It's important that kids know how to handle knives, not just for cooking, but for self-defense. Or zombie apocalypse stuff. Okay, so there we have Generations Evergreen Transformers. I don't know if Evergreen's the official title, but that's how they would be labeled if I were to throw them in a book. Evergreen inspired Transformers. They're still more than meets the eye. They're a money grab in disguise. That's it. Hey, happy, happy Halloween. Tomorrow's Halloween. Uh, my grandfather was born on Halloween in, uh, I, don't know, I think, 1912. Have a happy Halloween. Be safe. Wash your hands. Go vote November 3rd. Be safe. I'm not telling you who to vote for. I'm just saying go vote. Go vote. Wash your hands and wear masks. Masks save lives. Listen to scientists. Like Wheeljack. Wheeljack's a scientist, and he wants you to wear a mask. All right. You guys be safe. Love you. Peace.